Ladies and gentlemen, Lindsey Graham has promised his own deep dive after DOJ Inspector General report. Republican South Carolina, this is the Washington Examiner today, Republican South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham promised that he will launch his own deep dive inquiry into the origins of Trump Russia after the conclusion of Justice Department Inspector General Michael Horowitz's investigation into alleged violations of the Foreign, Surveillance, uh, Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. Quote, I promise your listeners, after Horowitz issues his report about the flawed FISA warrant, I'm going to do a deep dive into how this stuff started. The Senate Judiciary Committee chairman said while appearing on Sunday Morning Futures on Fox News this morning, how, how could it go so far if there was no collusion? So, Special Counsel Mueller uh, concluded that although Russians did interfere, in the which they didn't, we have no, they can't even... They can't even, and this is like hilarious, they can't even talk about alleged ties between the Kremlin and social media companies that bought Facebook ads because the judge in the case just recently the other day said, yeah, there's no evidence. There's absolutely no evidence that the Kremlin or Putin had anything to do with the social media companies and Facebook ads, so you can't. You can't, uh, the U.S. government can't talk or can't um, issue any declarative statements stating, oh yeah, Putin uh, had everything to do with, uh, you know, the Buff Bernard coloring books. Graham, speaking with Maria Bartiromo, said the probe by the Justice Department and FBI into possible ties between Trump campaign and Russia that began under President Obama was, quote, a politicized investigation. That, by the way, is completely and utterly Illegal. You cannot politicize. You cannot politicize the uh, United States intelligence community. If you do so, that falls under the statute that I talk about in my Federalist article, eighteen U.S. Code three seventy one, and that basically is the code, the statute that talks about people who who politicize who utilize, who defraud the United States, the people of the United States, into utilizing agencies against what their stated purpose is. In this case, it, the, these agencies, the FBI, um, all the intelligence officials that are part of this, Clapper, Brennan, Comey, Strzok, McCabe, they utilized the United States government as an extension of the Democratic Party. The Steele dossier was purchased by Clinton. CrowdStrike was outsourced by Democrats. Uh, uh, Christopher Steele was basically paid, a foreign national paid to write a whole bunch of nonsense and dirt on Trump. All of this, all of this was paid for, compiled with sources outside of the United States government, and they found nothing. They found absolutely nothing. In fact, I'll, I can do this every segment, which is why if I ever debated anyone who still believed this nonsense, it wouldn't be good for them. Quote, second, while the investing... So, really quickly, the preface here is that people say, well, you know, they, were in, they interfered in the election. Uh, there were ties between tr uh, Trump's campaign and R Russia. There were ties. There were links. Second, while the investigation identified numerous links between individuals with ties to the Russian government and individuals associated with the Trump campaign, the evidence was not sufficient to support criminal charges. Among other things, the evidence was not sufficient to charge any campaign official as an unregistered agent of the Russian government or other Russian principal. And our evidence about the June 9, 2016 meeting and DNC emails release of hack material was not sufficient to charge a criminal campaign finance violation. Further, the evidence was not sufficient to charge that any member of the Trump campaign conspired with representatives of the Russian government to interfere in the 2016 election. Nobody was charged with interfering in the election, which is what Democrats claim all the time. So, this is when Hillary Clinton was investigated, people uh, for her literally took material and beat it up with a hem and they destroyed evidence, and no one was prosecuted, no one was flipped, no, but nobody was prosecuted for minor offenses to get them to talk against Clinton. Everything they did to break Trump uh, world, they treated Clinton with kid gloves. Uh, they hated Trump, they wanted Clinton to win, they, this was a politicized investigation, it, scare, it should scare every American. So, this is good. Now, granted, 
Lindsey Graham did promise another Clinton email. He promised another Clinton email investigation. Hopefully he's about to do that any day now. But I think there's a greater chance of him getting to the bottom of the DOJ Inspector General report and its diplomatic um, wording. The Inspector General report is going to be like the last Inspector General report, hopefully a little bit more favorable towards President Trump. But the last IG report, there really wasn't much there. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we see what is happening in the Democratic Party. They're imploding. This, this, Lord, place. You see what's taking place with essentially the, 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 the Inspector General report last time came out with numerous statements saying that Peter Strzok was biased, saying that um, people engaged in behavior that was obvious, uh, that was out of the ordinary, out of protocol, uh, bizarre. There was biased behavior. They, in fact, didn't talk about the I will, we, we'll stop Trump text uh, specifically, but they said, well, you know, looked at within each, within this, um, within this laboratory-like focus, each specific instance might not be an example of the government uh, trying to cover up Clinton's emails, but he made certain, he said, well, the prosecutorial decisions weren't biased. The prosecutors were not given evidence. Clinton committed numerous crimes. The prosecutors were not given evidence on how she transferred top secret and special access program intelligence. The prosecutors were also not given evidence on how Clinton's emails were hacked by the planet. That's what Louis Gomer and Inspector General Charles McCulloch talked about. Louis Gomer talked about that. And Charles McCulloch and others tried to call the Inspector General Michael Horowitz. He didn't answer the phone. The whole thing was a cover-up in the extent that, to the extent where it didn't really blame Comey, but then it kind of did. And that's what the IG report is about. It's In this case, it's giving Durham enough information. He has enough information from the last Inspector General report, even though it was worded in the most diplomatic manner possible because the last Inspector General report, even though Michael Horowitz didn't want to make anyone look too bad, he he piled on Andrew McCabe and said, yeah, Andrew McCabe deserves to be indicted. He gave a criminal referral for the deputy director and, and then eventually the interim director of the FBI. So even the last Inspector General, there was some good things and that that set the foundation for what's going to eventually take place. He's under criminal investigation, Andrew McCabe. He's almost certainly going to be the first one indicted. That was the inspector general. Then they then they fired uh, Peter Strzok. So, ladies and gentlemen, Rome wasn't built in a day. You had eight years of a pure, a very politicized. Bush used it for the Republican Party to do bad things. Obama did the same thing for the Democratic Party. The intelligence community has always been a political tool, um, but. And the, 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 the craft or the institution of intelligence has always been political, even in ancient times. But not but the in American history, we haven't seen this type of uh, uh, where the intelligence community is utilized as pure, purely extensions of political parties started under Bush continued under President Obama, and now Trump is just completely dismantling the whole disgusting apparatus. Or I should say that he is he is ending a really, really dangerous and unhealthy tradition where you have political parties that can't win on their own, so they have to um, fabricate. They can't convince the American people on their own of foreign policy decisions so they had to fabricate evidence, and in this case, they fabricated evidence regarding Facebook, uh, regarding the Steele dossier. And they didn't even check DNC servers. CrowdStrike. Literally, we found out just in another court 
um, um, fiasco that CrowdStrike did not give the DNC its unredacted. That's this is in the Stone hearings. Uh, it's unredacted analysis. So the whole thing is an obvious, overt, obvious setup. I mean, it's obvious, okay? This is not even really up for debate. It's If you know anything about it, you know that it's a setup. Lindsey Graham is promising that he's going to look into the IG report, maybe foreshadowing the IG report's going to be good, but not that good. So the IG report is going to give information that detri- that's detrimental to the wonderful intelligence community. It's going to give enough information to John Durham to indict eventually. It will phrase and it will kind of try to communicate or convey this information in the most benign manner possible. So it'll be like, well, you know, the getaway car, people didn't really know what it was used for. Uh, yeah, the crowbar, uh, yeah, it was purchased for good reasons, but uh, they did utilize it to open up the safe. Um, but at that point, right then and there, they didn't realize that what they were doing was illegal. All of you know, That's the way it's going to be written. Anyway, this is really interesting. So Lindsey Graham promises that. Now, what took place today, ladies and gentlemen, which is just so hilarious, and I explained this in my last segment, the Democratic Party is in complete disarray. In complete disarray. What Trump did today with a kind of crude, um, uncouth um, message, which wasn't based on race, it was based on, um, in a very crude manner, well, if you don't like this country, uh, and you think that you have all the answers, um, maybe you can um, fix whatever, if you have all the answers, you could fix uh, problems in another country, come back and tell us how it went, uh, and maybe fix our problems here. It's crude, but there are a lot of people of all different backgrounds, of all different skin colors, of all different religions, of all different ethnicities, who agree with that sentiment. The Democratic Party is a political party that takes advantage of people's unhappiness. It takes advantage and it says, well, vote for us and we will protect or prevent this monster in the the White House and we will speak in the most... um, politically correct manner. But see, the other, just what, not long ago, Hillary Clinton, when she was interviewed during the Recode Decode uh, with Kara Swisher, that conference, where she said, I want to be president, she literally made a racist joke, said, oh yeah, all black people look alike. Hillary Clinton said that, literally using the phrase, they all look alike. And so there was no outrage there. So they, they, they don't have, look, if it's AOC or if it's other Congress people, if it's Clinton, if they're the ones who make the uh, statements that are offensive, um, they're not taken to task. It's completely one-sided and the rules change all the time on what's offensive, what's not offensive, what's uh, supremacy, what's not supremacy, uh, what's enabling, what's not enabling. It changes all the time. And it's based on a public relations spin. So they don't really care. Clinton came into the Democratic Party last last election taking prison lobbyist donations. Okay? Um, no one brings that up as a Democrat. We can go on forever with things she said and done. My point two is, is twofold. One, Clinton is running again. You cannot have... Okay, who is going to unify... The Demo- Think about it this way. Who's going to unify it, the Democratic Party? Me, Nombre, S. Beto? No. No, Beto O'Rourke is not. Bi- the Botox cadaver is not. Biden is not. One one millionth, uh, the, the woman who failed her DNA test is not. There is no. Willie Brown explained the California senator. California's senator cannot. Willie Brown, 85-year-old, former... Uh, San Francisco mayor, one of the most influential people in the Democratic Party, said that there's nobody in the Democratic Party that can even come close to to defeating Trump. Clinton's running again, and she'll she'll either formally, formally, formally announce after the third debate or in between the second and third debate. 
she doesn't have to. She can take her time because the the, the it's almost like a like this like stock option that's like the closer it gets to maturity, the closer they get to Iowa, the more they're going to panic. So she could just wait and say, "Look, you know what?" <laughs> and she's the only one who will get both AOC's endorsement and Pelosi's endorsement. Nobody else in the current field of Democrats would do that. So this whole thing from the Steele dossier to, to utilizing government officials to, to undermine Trump, this was all for Clinton, Clinton 2020. We will find that out. The, the other issue, and I always talk about that, but the other issue is they now can't, they cannot, they absolutely cannot say anything derogatory, any critique. They can't keep AOC or any other progressive uh, representatives at bay. These people are purely public relations. Well, AOC, I should say, is a public relations, essentially, essentially a creation, a public relations creation. No specific legislation that she's putting, a resolution that was a public relations resolution. Okay. Oh, Green New Deal. What the, is there anything you can do now that can push any legislation? She's not pushing Medicare for all legislation. She's not pushing abolish ISIS. She's just complaining about a lot of things, trying to moralize, trying to preach, pontificate, but it's not working out. People despise that type of behavior, and polls show that they, that that AOC is not very liked. Uh, if you look at favorability, ability of AOC. AOC's poll numbers are bad. This isn't Vox. <laughs> this is Vox. Okay. AOC disliked, distrusted, unwanted in her own district, Washington Examiner. So, so even Vox. AOC's national poll numbers are pretty bad. Only 23% of Americans have a favorable view. 36% had an unfavorable view. Okay? And the more they know, the more they dislike. So most people might not know what they generally, when, when I mean, pe- pretty much anyone who's into politics knows who AOC is. But generally, when you're not, you know, you know, the name recognition is not 100%, you're still, like, can get away with a pretty good, um, favorability rating of the people who, and, and this is a great many people who who know of AOC. There's she's only twenty three percent of Americans have a favorable view. Thirty six percent have an unfavorable view, and you can rest assured with things that she said lately, it's more than thirty six percent. Essentially, essentially, she and others are like. Trump's, they're like Trump operatives, which is fantastic. They're actually destroying the Democratic Party from within, which is hilarious. And they're not pushing Democrats. It's not like they're like pushing Democrats to pass Medicare for all. And so what Trump did today was force, ensure that Nancy Pelosi cannot, that Nancy Pelosi cannot critique her own freshman uh, representatives. Now there's an axis of shivel. Hello, the Washington Post opinion editor called it an axis of shivel. Okay, it was Maureen Dowd and Pelosi. And who else? Maybe I forgot exactly who, but the, the, the Democratic Party is engaged in the French Revolution of absurd thought. During the French Revolution, all the the revolutionaries turned on one another. That's where the guillotine was created. That's where it just it just was this self perpetuating um, revolution that ate its own. That's what's taking place, but with absurd and ridiculous and far fetched and hypocritical theories within the Democratic Party that Democrats themselves. Uh, their history and their cur- even their current rhetoric and actions uh, represent the antithesis of all the, the theories and all the pontification and all the preaching that you hear from them. Okay? 
We can go on. President Obama deported more human beings than any president ever. Yet suddenly it's like Democrats are like the voice of the powerless. They have a fetish. They want to be David uh, versus Goliath on every issue. And that's the, what the left is about. They're not really about morality. They're not about justice. They're about, oh, well, we're, we're, the, we're fighting the, the, the monolith or David or, or, sorry, or Goliath. We're fighting injustice. Like, no, you're not. No, you're not. You cheated Bernie Sanders and blamed Russia. All of this was inspired by Bernie Sanders. And what he did, instead of simply saying, yeah, Russia, che Russia had nothing to do with cheating me. You cheated me. And you cheated my voters. There has to be some kind of reckoning. And I'm not going to go along with this. All, they, all, all what, what could have happened was simply, once they realized that that mentality within the Democratic Party, that paradigm of thought, if they cheat that paradigm of thought, there is no more Democratic Party. They, and they, 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 if Bernie Sanders had ensured, because he engaged in cowardly acts trying to foment the same belief that, says, that said Russia informed the country that he was cheated, had he simply stood his ground and showed some integrity, Democrats would have actually regrouped. Maybe, maybe they would have been forced because Clinton still runs the show and always will until she loses again. Maybe they would have been forced to say, look, Clinton's going to run again still, da, 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 all this stuff. But we can't, we can't cheat this guy anymore. We have to change our ways. Or at least it would have been a wake-up call saying, okay, we can't manipulate these people anymore. What took place is Bernie Sanders completely acquiesced. And now there's a Frankenstein monster that isn't even worried, isn't even focused on legislation. It's all public relations. So they're, they're, they're choking and suffocating on their own propaganda. And Trump just ensured that there's no way out for Pelosi. And if she says anything else to AOC, she's part of the axis of Sheevil. Brilliant. Give me your thoughts below. Check out my Jerusalem Post article on AOC. It's very important. Please share it everywhere. Please. Thank you.